Okay, uh, so welcome back to another Kindred Reaction. I'm reacting to episode two today. I'm recording this uh, the day after I've watched episode one, but you probably aren't going to see it for maybe two days after, uh, just because I think I have two uh, reactions back to back. And, uh, you know, <laughs> anyway, um, so I, uh, but Kindred, episode one has been playing in my mind, uh, like, since I watched it yesterday. And I, I'm fascinated by uh, the change that they've made in the relationship between Dana and Kevin to the show, because um, I'm just going to talk about it. I, I've read the books. This is the perspective that you're getting, right? So I've read the book. In the book, they are married. And so there is a level of trust between them that Dana has towards Kevin. And that is the, the trust that is important in the narrative, is that she trusts him. She trusts his motivation. She trusts his heart. She trusts his understanding. Whereas now the way they've uh, had this happen, she has no idea who he is. And okay, uh, one of the interesting things uh, that happened with me with the book, I, I read it, like I said, for the first time, maybe three, four years ago. And then I reread it a month ago. And the second time I read it, I think just because I knew Dana's story, uh, and like it is a first person narrative, right? So you are in Dana's head, you are going through it with her and she goes through it. But the second time I read it, I found myself thinking about Kevin a lot uh, and the experience that he was having with this, which is very different from hers because of the fact that he's white. His whiteness is important to the story. And it's interesting in the show because they are putting that to the forefront, like not in a blatant way, and not, not necessarily his whiteness, but his the way that he doesn't realize his privilege impacts his life. And they've done it very interestingly in that in the, in the book, he is a more successful author. Like he's more successful in their field than she is. In the show, she has money. She doesn't really need to work. She's taking time to like break into her chosen field. She doesn't like she, she is free. She has economic privilege. He's working as a waiter. But he's also a white man. And there's at least three things that he does in episode one where he's just oblivious to his privilege. The first one is like joking about the fact that Dana is afraid that he's going to murder her. I mean, OK, it was a charming joke. I even laughed when it happened. But that's actually not particularly funny. Like it's it's a thing that he as a man can make a joke about. Haha, <laughs> you think I want to murder you because I'm big and strong and you are a woman like it's a thing that that is funny to him. It's literally life threatening to her. Um, and then there was the whole, oh, nobody watches soap operas. Well, actually, it's the most watched genre of television in the world. You just don't think so because you're a man and it's mostly watched by women and men ignore shit that women like. They just think it doesn't exist. And even if women are throwing money at it, men ignore it. It's it honestly is absurd the way men are with that. It's something I like I I've had this conversation with somebody literally this past week where anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But then the third one, when the neighbors come to the door and they're like, hey, we heard a woman screaming. He's like, oh, douchebags. He's offended by that. He's like because it's inconvenient to him, whereas that's actually a good thing that they heard a woman screaming and chose to investigate and like his obliviousness is interesting and it it is going to be interesting if they follow the same story as the books as to how that continues because in the book he ends up going back to and obviously he has an incredibly different experience than her so i'm I'm interested to see how that plays out. And I'm interested to see, to see what happens in this episode. So I guess let's go. Let's be nerdy. Let's be nerdy. Let's be nerdy. Let's be nerdy. Okay, so we're starting in Kevin's perspective. So he's just seen her. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting also to see how they deal with this because they don't actually ever deal with this in the books very much. Like, there's a bit of a, a side thing with people think that he's beating her. But, oh, how are they going to deal with this? Okay. How did, what is this house? The house is sucking you back in time. I need new clothes. Are, are you sure you don't want to call your aunt? 
she th aunt thinks your mother went she crazy and ran away. Crazy, but she's the only one who can tell you about your mother or any of this stuff. Yeah, you got a big black eye. Look at me. He's got claw marks on his neck. I'm coming. And he's sounding really aggressive. Hello again. Yeah. Cat? Uh, cat? Why are you hiding in the closet to do this? How do you two know each other? We went to college together. Why is he lying? She wasn't well. What, what, did you, what did you mean by that? What, what exactly was wrong with her? What, are you worried about something? Please. <laughs> I understand why her aunt's doing this. It's, it's realistic, but... She had fits of mania, and near the end of her life, she... The former occupant had a tendency to feed princess behind our backs. And... Sure. Have a good night. Sorry. Your cat has gone back in time. And, like, that is a nice lady who is very concerned about her neighbor who... Yeah. He thinks she's gone again. Data? Who was that at the door? Um, it's your neighbor. neighbor. Again, with some bullshit about a cat. I picked it up. And you took it back in time, and now it's gone. <laughs> That's when I got pulled back. And, and this time he was covered in blood. I mean, he wasn't covered he had in blood, but there was blood on his neck. Then I asked, I have to stay. I have to go back. Why is he on this app? What's happening? Please, Dana, please come with me. If something <laughs> happens, it happens. Please, we gotta get off this block. Oh, it's happening again. Dana! And he's, yeah, she's holding on. This is how they go together. And now there's snow. At least she's got clothes on. I mean, the cat went with her, so she should have known that. But I, I, I understand. You're not really thinking clearly in a moment like this. Does he have shoes? So she knows, like, she knows that it's all about Rufus. She's figured that out. Oh. Or no, is he just in socks? He is just in socks. Stay awake. Stay with me. This Rufus child. Kevin's got a bit of an odd gait. Like, his, the way he walks is very... I mean, he's freezing, and this is a lot, but the, his gait is really odd. Hey! We are travelers. We came upon them. Traveling. <laughs> Wait here. I bring my wagon. Sorry, the way he, Kevin did that, like, it's like, I'm, I'm repeating the line she gave me. Again, I will just say, their accents, I'm not... The, their accents are all very modern, and it's stay hey, weird. Stay with me. I, stay with I don't know. Something odd. The way their accents are hitting my ear, it's strange. TV? <laughs> TV you can be educational. Stay calm. Pretend it's like a game. Pretend <laughs> it's like a game. <sighs> he can. He can do that. She is. She cannot. Wow, he's pale. Okay, so is she gonna recognize her? Is she gonna recognize Dana? What's wrong with you? Yes, man, no is not a good man. Tree, broke his leg. Where's Nigel? Let me step me to allow me to take my leave. Charles, no, you must stay. We were just getting down to So the adults like it's the kids so far, their accents are Tom, your odd son to me. Needs... To her. Just go inside. I'll, I'll catch up with you in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> don't you what if He starts asking me questions. What do I say? I'm Dana, by the way. Yeah, she does. It, is it? I forget her name, but she doesn't speak, if I remember correctly. Do you know Olivia? Do you... Yeah, he's just in his socks. <laughs> oh my gosh, he looks like he's gonna wet himself. <laughs> what she got on her feet? Yes. <laughs> Did she literally just try to make a phone call? <laughs> Kevin, you ain't too bright. <laughs> Lord. I feel like I recognize this actor. I need to see his face close up. Is that Jason from True Blood? Is that like the... Like the I forget it. Is, is it. is it the actor from True Blood? more about this robbery. Gun in my face. Yeah, it's him. It's him. Said back. <laughs> you're so very dead. good at lying, Kevin. And your shoes. That's your slave's name? 
Is this when it's going to hit him? Yeah. North in New York? She was purchased from New York. You... Kevin, you're bad at this. Just talk in New York. That's how she talks. New York's not a slave. I mean, what year is this? She's the only slave but I've ever had. I don't think so, New York was a slave state at this time. So you are new to the arrangement, Bob, in the first place. Look, a slave like that is want to prioritize their own safety over that of their yeah. uh, uh, So gross. Yeah, it's very nice of him to give him clothes after that disgusting speech. Dana, that's not how you sit. I mean, it is, but still. The devil. The man you came with. No, he's just... The devil. A man. A... Trying to get there and back without getting stuck? So I can't Olivia's okay. An animal and it's cold. But it's important. Man ain't been seen ever since, and Olivia won't say. But how long has it been since... Did Olivia you? kill him? It must be about... Can I have a word? Being way too polite. <laughs> yeah, he's watching them. Kevin, let's go. I think you're my slave. Yeah, that's not surprising. Yeah, she's put what it together. Just keep a little profile. Your presence is requested in the house. Yeah, that's not gonna be you can't say you can't Miss be Frank, separated be because Dr. of a <laughs> white man and a black woman. Dr. West is a pleasure. <laughs> Doctor, ew, <laughs> ew. I was informed that a child bled. Hmm. Uh, bled. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Medical you care this time. Alone, the child is I don't think that's necessary. Dana, why? You, nobody cares what you think right now. He wasn't out there for very long. My servant <clears throat> is actually the one who found him and healed him. One of these so called root women, I presume. Women. Well, far more sophisticated art than your primitive mind will ever comprehend. Mr. Franklin, do uh, keeping your slave quiet. Would you like to wash your hands, sir? No, no, no. <laughs> no time. <laughs> All the other stuff that's happening. Yeah, no time to wash my hands before I slice into your child. Grab her. <sighs> Kevin is not helping in the situation in the slightest. I'm just giving her what? Oh, it's laudanum, if I remember correctly. Look at me. Yeah. We got like varying degrees of discrimination here. Got a white woman, black woman. Oh, God. What a. Oh. Amazing anybody survived this time period. Thank you, Kevin, for all of your help in standing in the corner. Yeah, she's stoned. Mm, he's gonna play the piano. Yeah, she gonna find him kinda yummy. He's fine, too. It's good. Yeah, it is good. And I have a slave with the most peculiar ailment of the foot which might be a benefit to your studies so he's gonna trade a slave yeah for medical care what she got the sugar foot my name oh when did you see this rufus yeah see How? this is when rufus was a sweet little boy as i was following and Dr. West here will make sure you're able to come visit whenever is convenient. Isn't that right, Doctor? That's right. All right, yeah, now just... hurry along before the roads yeah. are past. You no longer live here. You live there. So long, Raymond. All your friends and family staying here. Why do you look so, uh, flummoxed? <laughs> There's a piano. Not like he's making this noise with his nose. Sorry, I hope you don't mind. That piano hasn't been touched in over a decade. It's amazing it's in tune. It is. Mm -hmm. Let us read and write. If Daddy catches his servant looking at a book. Interesting he said servant. The same as if you had stolen something. Well, Why did he say the word servant? Good. No, we're not to make eye contact. That's good. Rufus, go. 
Uh, how can you treat me this way? Rude little boy. <laughs> Read, Dana. Yeah. See, he always had this in him. Always. Like, even, you know, in the book, that happens. Before he quitted Red Drift. But you still, you think he's a sweet little boy who's just, he doesn't know any better, but he's always had this in him. He's just like, I, it's my way. I want my things. I want my is way I, and my, is Dana, I want my plan. She's upstairs with the boy. Bring Mr. Franklin's servant a warm bowl of whatever mush it Interesting is. they keep servant. using the word servant. And I can't seem to relate with such an, uh, an effeminate peahen of a man. Effeminate peahen? Your pee family man, Mr. Franklin? Mm -hmm. Uh, died. Kevin is just bad at lying. <laughs> yes. Why don't you stay here with us? Hmm? For another day or two. I'll... Thank you. Yes. Probably become a music teacher for Rufus. Two minutes south. He fell asleep quick. That was what, like, four pages it looks like in the book? Somehow he can see me before I come back here. So who brought her mom? He saw you. She's the only person that would know, and I... No, your mom doesn't know. She was asking you. She's been here for 12 years. If she could go back, she'd be back. It was no problem. She's just Are sitting on the bed. I'd be happy to escort you to your lodgings. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd rather stay here. Thank you. <laughs> We really must insist on slaves sleeping in their own quarters. She said slaves. Don't worry, we have very fine accommodations waiting for her. This way, French. <laughs> Just click your planner like a dog. Ugh. Lock it from the outside? How is she supposed to then get to her master should she be needed? I think that doesn't make any sense. This would be going to be really good to have like one of those solar powered battery chargers. Are you still trying to get a signal? Oh no, he's taking pictures, okay. See, that brick on your back would be really, really cold, I would imagine. Unless it's like a chimney. Okay, so yes, Kevin has gone back with her. Um, I'm finding the, the way that the show is done really far, they, everything is very understated. Uh, the actress playing Dana, she is very even. I, I, I'm imagining that I, I, I'm assuming that it's going to build, right? Like I know the story from the book, so I know that things escalate, but it's, I am finding it just very, everything is very sedate and calm. Uh, there's like obviously some very gross stuff, like treating a person, a human being for medical care and the way that people of course talk to Dana, that is it is to be expected. It is jarring. It is the barest tip of the iceberg of what she is about to go through. And seeing like the, the contrast and the experience they're having so far uh, between Kevin and Dana, uh, it it is like not, you know, to discount, like obviously Kevin's going through it too. Like this is not something that he would want in any shape or form, but his life is not in danger. He's not, um, he's not under threat in this time period because of just who he is. He's a white man. And I, that's actually the, the, <laughs> I, I said it at the beginning that the second read had me thinking about Kevin more, like, and just that the, the, his experience and the way his privilege would impact the way he encountered this story. I guess this is the third time I'm going through the story. Obviously, there are changes, but the mother, I'm like, I'm noting this time I was just, that jumped out at me as, oh, that is a whole other level 
in here because we have the the privilege that the men have. And Rufus, like in the books, it's this case too that he just has no respect for his mom whatsoever. She's just a woman. He doesn't need to care about her. And nobody cares about her her feelings uh, in in the book. I, it's in, like that's jumping out at me in, in this moment. And then, of course, her sort of reveling in the amount of power that she has over somebody who happens to be beneath her. It's it's that pitting people against each other that happens when you you stratify people according to privilege and class and, and, and gender and, and race. And you, when you do that and you, you say, okay, you are higher than you, like it pits people who are out, like the people who don't have the upper echelon of privilege end up infighting with each other instead of teaming up together and being like, hey, you know what? The people on top are screwing us all. Let's do something about it. No, they they fight against each other, um, which, I mean, that you see here. I think I know why this was all dropped all at once uh, instead of in in a series. Be, I, and I think it is because of how understated it is. You kind of need the build up, And I, I don't know. I don't know. If I'm saying that that's a bad thing or a good thing, I just, I know that I'm intrigued by the story because I know the story. I don't know that I would be intrigued by this if I had just flipped it on and then was told I had to wait until next week to see what happens. It, it, it hasn't, like, I'm sucked in because I know what's, what's coming. If I didn't know what's coming, I don't know that the way the story is being told it's just, it's very, I, I'm getting, it's understated. It's, it's not gripping. It's, it, I'm gripped because I know it's coming. I, if I didn't know it's coming, I think I would have like, you know, if I had to wait until next week, I might've forgotten about the show because it, it is, it's not reaching itself into me like that. Um, the child actors, uh, Rufus got better. Like his, it's his accent stopped bothering me. Uh, the more he talked, um, so like last episode, it was just like the one or two lines that was like, Ugh. and then in this episode, uh, there was the I think it's Nigel. Uh, his like two lines also just kind of hit me like, oh. So if I get to hear him talk more, maybe it'll it'll flow better for me. Um, but I don't know the adult actors. They're, yeah, they're, they're, their accents are fine. They're, they all have a bit more to them than I, again, was expecting or, or, no, not expecting. Expecting is not the right word. Than they do in the books. Like, again, because of the way the story is told, it's a first person narrative. We see everything through Dana's perspective. So if she doesn't see the interaction between Kevin and Rufus's dad, whose name I completely forget, then we don't know about it. Like, we hear about it third hand. Like through Kevin telling Dana, that's how we hear about it. So I, we're seeing stuff that we wouldn't normally see, or you wouldn't see, you didn't see in the book. There's obviously still the mystery with her mom, and I guess this is like some sort of genetic condition. I'm curious to know whether, like, who it is that drew her mom back. Why did her mom end up coming back in time? And if she'll be able to get back. I mean, her mom's, my God, 12 years. Dear Lord. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, um, let me know your thoughts on this uh, in in the comments below, and um, I, I don't know what do you feel about the tone uh, that the show is going with. I'm like, am I alone in this? I, I'm assuming most people watching this probably watch the whole thing because it was dropped all at once. Um, but yeah. Anyway, let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments below. And if you like my content, and you want to support me. I do have a Patreon. It is always linked in the description below. Thank you. As always to my patrons, I am so grateful for you. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, I am going to end this here. So please like, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye. <laughs>